What's up, Packer fans? Happy Saturday. Welcome into the Packaday podcast. We've officially made it to the NFL postseason. Thanks so much for joining me today. You can follow me on Twitter at Andy Herman NFL. You can follow the podcast at Packaday Podcast. Let's jump in right away. We have Packer All Pros and not second team All Pros. We have Packer First Team All Pros. We have one unanimous First Team All Pro. It was quite a day for the Green Bay Packers. Anytime you can get all pros, uh, first team all pros especially, it's a pretty special accomplishment. And again, Green Bay having three of them. Let's start with Mr. Unanimous himself, Devontae Adams. No doubt about it, right? Mr. 99 on Madden, Mr. Best Wide Receiver in Football, Mr. Future Hall of Famer, Mr. Best Wide Receiver in Football. Devontae Adams is more than deserving of this award there's nothing that I can tell you guys that I haven't told you already. He's the most fun wide receiver I've ever had the joy of watching. And certainly from a Packers standpoint, right? Sterling Sharp, amazing. Jordy Nelson, fantastic. Greg Jennings, fantastic. James Jones, super fun. Like you can go over any Packers receiver that you want. James Lofton was before my time. I would love to have watched Don Hudson and and his numbers that, you know, in, in his era are incredible. But almost irregardless of anything, just watching Devontae Adams be Devontae Adams is a joy. And I think we sometimes get caught up in comparing players. I don't care. You compare him to whoever you want. There's nobody like Devontae Adams to me in the history of football. Stefan Diggs is a unique comparison. I think he's like a B plus Devontae Adams, but Adams' ability to release, to high point the football, contested catch, late hands, be on the same page as Aaron Rodgers, be a consummate professional, and just do everything that he does at an A-plus level is nothing short of phenomenal. And as I've mentioned on multiple occasions before, there are very few, if any, players that I've had the pleasure of watching that are as enjoyable and as, you know, whose tape I enjoy watching as much as Devontae Adams, whose practice, whose practice in training camp during the dog days of summer when everyone's just grinding it out, whose practice I enjoy watching more than Devontae Adams, his attention to detail, his professionalism, his love for the art and the craft of playing football and wide receiver is second to none. His matchups with Jair Alexander in practice are second to none. His love of the game, his joy of playing it, how he plays it, how he continues to try to get better. Yeah, I, I loved his take like this offseason that he watched a bunch of Lamar Jackson and said, hey, if Lamar Jackson can make a bunch of people miss in the open field, why can't I? He's so good and so determined to be the best. It's, it's phenomenal. And these unanimous first team all pros may not mean a, a ton in the scheme of things, right? And what I mean by that is he wants a ring. And ultimately, at the end of the day, he wants a gold jacket, I'm sure. But the, these are things that as you, you know, as somebody is making a case for Devontae Adams as a Hall of Famer, and maybe that case doesn't even need to be made. Maybe that will, you know, that case will make itself eventually, and he may be there already. But these sort of accomplishments, first team unanimous all pro at wide receiver, help make your case towards an eventual Hall of Fame career. And to me, there's no doubt about it. He's a Hall of Famer. And he probably needs to go a, a, you know, a few more seasons of playing at a high level to, to just kind of round that out longevity standpoint. I, you know, at this point, it doesn't matter. It, you know, as a Packer fan, you hope he gets there eventually. But enjoy these moments of watching a special player in his prime. I have nothing but the most insane superlatives to say and adjectives to use for Devontae Adams. Easily one of my favorite players and Packers I've ever had the joy of watching and covering and breaking down film of. And I hope he's a Green Bay Packer for as long as can possibly be. I'm not holding my breath on that because I know this offseason is going to be insane. But certainly, without question, unequivocally, well-deserving of a unanimous first-team All-Pro. You had another first-team All-Pro. His name was Aaron Rodgers. He was not unanimous. Tom Brady got some of those votes. But this is a fairly good indicator that Aaron Rodgers is going to win the MVP. Now, it's not a certainty. There have been times in the past, John Elway, 
where a second team all pro actually won the MVP. I'm not even sure how the calculus works for that. I do think that there is some potential that maybe a voter, <laughs> Hubarkish, uh, I, I kid and say in jest somewhat, but there could be a voter that says, you know, I'm okay having him on a first team all, you know, all pro, but based on the entirety of the off season and everything this year, I can't vote him for MVP. There could be somebody that harbors those thoughts. I would disagree with that person, but there could be somebody. Aaron Rodgers beat Tom Brady clean in the all pro race. So he has votes to, you know, you know, he has plenty of votes to spare, but we don't know if there could be people who vote for a Jonathan Taylor, a Cooper Cup, who was in, uh, both of which were unanimous first team all pros, a Trent Williams. So we just don't know. And to me, Trent Williams missed the last game and it's really difficult to make the argument that an offensive lineman can be a first team all pro or excuse me, a not a first team all pro, a MVP player. He's arguably the player who played best this entire season, but very tough to argue he was most valuable, especially when he missed his team's last game with the season on the line and the 49ers won that game to get in the playoffs. Tough to argue. Really tough to argue Jonathan Taylor, whose team lost the last two games and could not make the playoffs. That's really that's a really tough sell at that point to be MVP of the entire league when your team didn't make the playoffs and your team lost the last two games and you didn't get much going on the ground. That's a very tough sell, even though I love Jonathan Taylor. Cooper Cup, I have a I have a tough time as, as amazing as a season as he has had of saying that he is your MVP of the league, the most valuable player. He was amazing. I love watching Cooper Cup play. Give him Offensive Player of the Year if you want. I don't think you can make the argument of MVP. That means it's Brady Rogers. And yes, you could have a couple votes trickle for Taylor, for Cooper Cup, maybe a Trent Williams, maybe a Micah Parsons. Who the heck knows what people are voting these days? I give up on trying to value what and understand why people are voting for what they're voting for in any capacity. But if this ultimately comes down to Brady Rogers. Rodgers had him clean in the all-pro vote, and I got to think that that means that Aaron Rodgers has won his fourth MVP. We shall see. Time will tell. Nothing surprises me anymore, but it certainly seems like that's going to be the case. And then maybe the best story of the day, Devontae Adams, amazing. Aaron Rodgers, amazing. But Devondre freaking Campbell, all-pro first team, not second team. And I'll be, I'll be honest here. I think there would have been a lot of Packer fans that would have been pretty pumped if Devondre Campbell even got second team all pro, right? He wasn't a pro bowler. He did not get voted to the pro bowl. If he would have gotten voted, if he would have been voted second team all pro, that would have been a, a huge accomplishment for Devondre Campbell. No, first team all pro. Phenomenal accomplishment, well-deserved and well-earned accomplishment for Devondre Campbell. And there's nothing to take away from him. The story is incredible. Arizona did not re-sign him. They drafted a linebacker in the first round. You know, they drafted a first linebacker in the first round last season as well. Didn't have a spot for him anymore. Struggled really in Atlanta and in Arizona, if we're being fair. Was not was not Green Bay Devondre Campbell in either of those situations. Had all the talent, sideline to sideline speed, strength, size, you know, uh, ability to get anywhere he needed to, coverage ability. He had everything. Just never put it together. Goes throughout free agency, no free agent deal. Then Green Bay, towards the end of free agency, says, hey, we'll give you a couple million to come play for us. And he says, yeah, I'm in. And the rest is history. And he is a massive difference maker and a huge reason as to why Green Bay is competing for a Super Bowl this year and more than well-deserving of a first-team All-Pro vote. Technically, the third linebacker voted in. Doesn't matter. That's an All-Pro. That's a first-team All-Pro. And you're never going to take that away from Devondre Campbell. Now, Devondre Campbell's amazing season, his first team all pro, and everything that he's put on tape this year is going to make it a lot harder for Green Bay to re-sign him next year. That's just the honest truth of it, especially if they want Rodgers and Adams back, or Zool Douglas. Like there's, The list goes on and on. Bobby Tunyon, who knows? They, they could go in a million different directions, but it's going to be really tough to get Campbell back. There's going to be a huge demand for his services. If this is one and done, it was a heck of a one and done for Devondre Campbell. And hopefully he can pay that off with a Super Bowl win at the end as well and get him a ring. But from $2 million late free agency flyer to first team all pro, it arguably, arguably the most, you know, I think Kenny Clark's still the most important player on the Packers defense 
make a strong argument that Devondre Campbell is second. What a signing for Brian Gutekunst. What a season by Devondre Campbell. Never take away the the work ethic and the desire of the player in that situation as well. Joe Barry is defensive coordinator, using him in the right spots. And then certainly the the linebackers coach, uh, Kirk Olavadati, and, and the rest of this Packers defensive staff for getting Devondre Campbell to play at the level he's played at. It's amazing, and he deserves a ton of credit for what he's been able to do this year. So kudos to your three first-team All-Pro Packers, Devontae Adams, Aaron Rodgers, and Devondre Campbell. Next up, let's talk about Whitney Merciless. I didn't get, excuse me, I didn't get to talk to, about him yesterday. I, I had a chat with Mike Wall. I, I, we talked a little bit about Merciless, but not a ton. This is a weird scenario where you get all of these All-Pro Packers back, Devondre Campbell, Jair Alexander, uh, or excuse me, David Bakhtiari, Jair Alexander, and, you know, Zadarius Smith, and then you get Randall Cobb back, uh, Myers, and like all these guys are coming back. And the least of your concerns or worries is Whitney Merciless. And all of those other players that I just named are arguably far more important than Whitney Merciless. But for some reason that I can't explain, when the when it was announced that Whitney Mer- Merciless returned to practice, that's when it felt like, Okay, this there's something going on here. This is special and it's tough to ignore. Dude tore his bicep in some capacity. For him to come back in any way, shape, or form this season is incredible. And he deserves a ton of credit for being the professional that he is, for coming back this season and working so hard to get back this season. You can tell how much it means to Merciless. You know that he knows that this is his chance to get a Super Bowl ring, and he wants to be a part of that. Yeah, he could have still gotten a Super Bowl ring by sitting on the sidelines. He wants to help this team win a Super Bowl ring. And that's amazing. And there's a lot of the guys that are working their way back from injury that feel the exact same way, that want to be part of this magical run, that want to get this team over the hump, that want to win Green Bay a Super Bowl, bring the Lombardi back to Green Bay. That's a special feeling. And for whatever reason, Whitney Merciless coming back has given me an unrealistic boost of confidence for this postseason. And it just, it's hard to feel like this is coming up anything other than spades for Green Bay. Returns from injury don't win you playoff games. They certainly don't win you a Super Bowl. Green Bay is going to have to go out and earn that. Nothing's given to them. I'm certainly not crowning them champs. Neither are, are you, I'm sure. But it just feels like this is a special season in some capacity. Green Bay's had a lot of other special seasons. And as I mentioned the other day, a storybook season doesn't necessarily mean it has to end in a storybook ending. We've seen a lot of storybook seasons that have ended in heartbreak. In fact, over the three decades of Brett Favre and Aaron Rodgers, there have been far more heartbreaking endings than there have been happy endings. So I understand protecting yourself from that potential thought process, but man, what a journey. And I will always believe that the journey is greater than the end. And these moments and these players coming back and mat- you know how much it matters to them and fighting to come back for a divisional round game, I can't tell you how excited I am to watch that that next game. I think this team is going to come out on absolute fire. Maybe I'm wrong. We'll see. But I think that team, I think this Green Bay team is ready, prepared mentally, physically. They're going to get time off. They're getting guys back. And I think they're going to come out, you know, shot out of a cannon. And I think they'll still remain even keeled but I would not want to be the team that plays plays Green Bay in uh, the divisional round. I, I really like Green Bay and the, you know their their chances in that game, and and really through the remainder of this postseason, we'll see what that means moving forward. It doesn't mean anything. You have to win on the field. You can't win on paper. You can't win based on momentum. You can't win based on injury reports. You got to win on the field. But I wouldn't want to see Green Bay if I were any other team. Uh, really quickly, I did want to give out my top 10 grades for this season. I posted them on the Twi- on Twitter the other day, uh, but I actually flubbed it. I messed it up. I had Razul Douglas actually rated too low. I misread the number. So let me give you my full top 10 graded Green Bay Packers this season. I do want to mention, because I've had a few people clap back at me, if you will, comparing position, you know, players between position groups isn't the ideal way to do this based on my grades. Um, there's no perfect, like there's no curve, right? Quarterback is going to have a super high variance. They have way more high end plays, way more low end plays, and the the highs and lows are going to be much higher. Offensive lineman, defensive lineman, going to be steadier. Secondary players have more opportunity for negative plays. So you know there's 
you know, wide receivers and running backs have more opportunity for huge positive plays and less opportunity for huge negative plays. So, you know, determining value here between positions is really tough to do, but I'm going to try to handicap it a little bit as I go through this. The number one clear front runner was Aaron Rodgers. And regardless of whether it's quarterback or not, I think that's the legitimate number one player on this team. Number two is Devontae Adams in a clear number two. I think that's also the case. I think he's the clear number two player on this team. Same thing with number three, Kenny Clark. And then you, you may disagree with this, but same thing with number four, at least based on my grades, is Aaron Jones. And I think people forget you know, Aaron Jones made a lot of things happen on his own this year and had very few mistakes, caught the ball, caught the ball out of the backfield well. And I know that a lot of people are really high on how the offensive line played with all the injuries. This offensive line deserves a crap ton of credit for surviving with all the injuries. They didn't play great. The The biggest difference between 2020 uh, 20 and 2021 in my grades was a huge, massive decrease on the offensive line. When you go from David Bakhtiari, Elton Jenkins, Corey Lindsley, etc., to backup players, there's going to be a major fall off, and there was. The holes that were there for the running backs were not the same. The, the time that Aaron Rodgers had to pass was not the same. The offensive line deserves all the credit in the world for working through the injuries this season. Adam Stenovich deserves the credit, and I've, I've gone... I've waxed poetic about how amazing this offensive line has performed given the fact that they have a second team offensive line, but you're basing it off of expectations. You would expect this offensive line when they get to their second team to be brutal. They weren't. They were serviceable, but serviceable is a lot different than great. And in 2020, the offensive line was great, great, like great, great, great. In 2021, they were serviceable. That is a massive downgrade. And Aaron Jones didn't have the same opportunities, but he deserves a lot of credit for the way that he ran. And to me, he's still the clear number four on my list this season. Now, numbers five through 10 are all very closely related and you could put them in any order and I wouldn't have an argument with you. That's how close they were. And again, debating between which positions have different values and things like that. You can make all of those arguments, but put the next six guys in any order that you want. So one Rodgers, two Adams, three Clark, four Jones, and a pretty clear one through four for me. Number five was Razul Douglas. Number six, A.J. Dillon. Seven, Adrian Amos. Eight, Devondre Campbell, who I believe is more valuable than that number eight. I, I would probably put him you know, right in that Razul Douglas, probably at number five, maybe even number four over Aaron Jones. But uh, again, I think I, I think he, he tapered a little bit towards the end, but regardless, a phenomenal season for Campbell, uh, but you could arguably put him a little bit higher, wouldn't argue with that. Number nine, Randall Cobb, and number, number 10, Rashawn Gary. Now, if you want to put Rashawn Gary ahead of Randall Cobb, I'm not going to argue with that at all. I think wide receiver has a little bit of an easier path to that route than uh, Rashawn Gary does, and I think there's zero question, and I'm not going to argue at all, Rashawn Gary was so much more valuable to this team than Randall Cobb was. There's no argument there, right? So I'm not saying unequivocally, like, like these are the 10 best players in order this season. These are the players that graded out the best per my grades. And again, it's really difficult to compare position groups uh, because they're not created equally. And I think you can make a strong argument for value. Um, I do think some people get caught up in the, the more recent past, meaning that like a lot of people were talking about Alan Lazard, Preston Smith, you know, Dean Lowry, those players have played phenomenal the last handful of weeks. That wasn't the case always earlier in the season. So they still had to sort of make up for some of that. And they were close, but didn't get in the top 10. All three very good players, especially towards the end of the year. But one Rodgers, two Adams, three Clark, four Jones, five Douglas, six Dylan, seven Amos, eight Campbell, nine Cobb, and 10 Rashawn Gary. Real quick, my predictions for Saturday's games. I can't wait for these. I'm going Raiders over Bengals. I think the Bengals are the better team. Uh, I wouldn't bet this game personally, but Max Crosby and this Raiders pass rush, Yannick Ngakwe against a really bad Bengals offensive line, I think is going to be the difference. We saw Joe Burrow get a little bit banged up in his last game, wondering how you know just how healthy he is. I'm going to give the slight nod to the Raiders coming off the momentum from their win against the Chargers. We'll see. Nothing would surprise me here. I, I love the Bengals. I think they're a super fun team. I hope the Bengals win. But I'm going to go Raiders in this one based on the trenches. And then Bills-Patriots, I love this game. I can't wait to watch this game. 
I'm going to go Patriots, but I don't feel confident about, excuse me, I'm going to go Bills, but I don't feel confident about that either. And uh, I think Josh Allen is going to have a, uh, you know, outplay Mac Jones, which is going to be the difference in this game. I, I love both of these games. I can't wait for playoff football. I hope you'll enjoy it. I hope you enjoy this episode. I'm going to be right back here tomorrow, breaking down Saturday's games, previewing Sunday's games. I'm sure talking more Packers stuff. Join me if you can. Subscribe if you haven't already. I will see you tomorrow. But until next time, and as always, Go Pack Go.